In the first chapter of The Principles of Psychology by William James, he introduces readers to the scope and purpose of psychology. He begins with a discussion on how it is impossible for any one person to understand all aspects or phenomena in life due to its complexity. Therefore, psychologists must focus their attention on certain areas that are most important and relevant at any given time. This leads him into discussing two main branches within psychology experimental, or physiological, psychology which focuses primarily on physical processes such as brain activity, and descriptive, or mentalistic, psychology which looks more closely at conscious experience including thoughts, feelings, beliefs etc. From there he goes on to discuss topics like consciousness itself, what exactly does this mean? How can we measure it? What role do emotions play in our lives? And finally touches upon some philosophical questions about free will versus determinism, whether humans have control over their own actions or if they're predetermined by external forces beyond our understanding. In conclusion then James argues that while these issues may be difficult ones for us today they should not stop us from exploring them further so as better comprehend ourselves both individually and collectively. Chapter 2 of the Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the functions and processes that occur in the brain. He begins with a discussion about how different parts of the brain are responsible for various activities, such as vision or hearing. He then goes into detail regarding specific areas within each part, including their structure and function. For example, he explains how neurons transmit information from one area to another via electrical signals, this is known as neural transmission. Additionally, he discusses reflexes, automatic responses triggered by certain stimuli, and describes them in terms of both physical reactions, example muscle contractions, and mental ones, example memories. Finally, James talks about higher-level cognitive abilities like problem-solving and decision-making which require more complex processing than simple reflexive behavior does, these involve multiple regions working together to achieve an outcome based on past experiences or knowledge acquired through learning slash education. Chapter 3 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the elements that make up consciousness. He begins with a discussion about how conscious states are composed and what makes them unique from one another, noting that they can be divided into two categories sensations and ideas. Sensations refer to direct experiences such as sight or sound while ideas involve more abstract concepts like memories or beliefs. From there he moves on to discussing attention, which is an important factor in determining our level of awareness for any given moment, this includes both voluntary focus, selective, and involuntary shifts, involuntary. Next he looks at memory, exploring its various forms including short-term recall versus long-term storage as well as different types like recognition versus recollection. Finally, he examines imagination, the ability to create mental images based off past experience, and emotion slash feeling before concluding his chapter with some general observations regarding these topics overall. Chapter 4 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the concept and nature of thought. He begins with a discussion about how thoughts are not always conscious, but can be unconscious or subconscious as well. He then goes into detail regarding different types of thinking such as associative, logical, imaginative, and creative thinking. Additionally, he discusses topics like attention span in relation to thought processes, memory recall, imagination versus reality, mental images slash pictures that accompany certain ideas or concepts when we think about them, emotions associated with our thoughts, i.e., fear, habit formation through repetition over time which leads to automaticity in some cases where no further effort is required for us to complete an action once it has been learned thoroughly enough etc. Finally he concludes his chapter discussing the importance placed upon understanding one's own stream of thought process so that they may better control their actions based off what they have consciously chosen rather than being driven solely by instinctive reactions without any real consideration given beforehand towards potential consequences resulting from those decisions made impulsively due to lack thereof self-awareness. Concerning this matter at hand here today now. Chapter 5 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception and experience of time. He begins with a discussion about how we perceive duration, noting that it is not an absolute measure but rather something relative to our own experiences. 
He then moves into discussing memory as related to temporal awareness, arguing that memories are organized in terms of their relation to past events or present moments, this allows us to have some sense for what has happened before and will happen next. Finally, he discusses the concept of time binding which refers both literally, in terms physical objects, and figuratively, as ideas. In conclusion, James argues that while there may be no single way humans understand time universally across cultures or individuals, all people do share certain commonalities when perceiving its passage through life's various stages from birth until death. Chapter 6 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception of space. It begins with a discussion about how we perceive objects in our environment and their spatial relationships to one another, as well as how these perceptions are affected by distance from us or other factors such as light intensity. He then goes into detail regarding different types of visual illusions that can occur due to misperceptions related to size, shape, color and motion, he also discusses auditory illusions which involve sound waves being perceived differently depending upon where they originate from within an acoustic field. Finally, James examines various theories concerning why humans have evolved this ability for perceiving space so accurately despite its complexity, including evolutionary adaptation theory and gestalt psychology's notion that it is based on innate mental structures rather than learned ones. In Chapter 7 of The Principles of Psychology by William James, the perception of objects is discussed. It begins with a discussion on how we perceive an object as one whole thing rather than its individual parts and components. This phenomenon is known as gestalt or figure-ground relationship in which certain elements are seen to be grouped together while others stand out from them due to their contrastive features such as color, size etc. He then goes on to discuss various aspects related to this concept like closure, the tendency for us humans fill up gaps between two separate entities so that they appear connected, similarity, objects having similar characteristics tend get perceived together, and proximity, nearby items being more likely associated. James also talks about illusions where our visual system can sometimes misinterpret what it sees leading us into perceiving something different from reality, he gives examples like muller liar illusion wherein straight lines look curved when placed within particular context along with other optical illusions based upon perspective distortion among many others. Furthermore, he explains why these phenomena occur citing factors such as past experiences playing role in forming expectations regarding shape slash size slash color etc thus influencing our interpretation process resulting in misperception at times. Finally, he concludes his chapter discussing importance of understanding perceptual processes since it helps explain behavior better especially during decision-making scenarios involving multiple options available before a person who has limited time frame decide best course action. Chapter 8 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception of relations. It begins with a discussion about how we perceive relationships between objects, and then moves to an exploration into what is known as associationism, the idea that all mental processes are based upon associations formed through experience or habit. This chapter also examines various types of associations such as contiguity, objects being close together in time or space, similarity, similarity among ideas, and contrast, differences between two things. Additionally, it looks at different kinds of memory including short-term memories which last only for seconds, long-term memories which can be recalled after years have passed, and unconscious memories where information has been stored but not consciously accessed yet. Finally, this chapter discusses the importance placed on context when perceiving relationships if one object appears out place within its environment it may appear more salient than other items around it due to our tendency to focus attention towards unexpected elements in order to make sense of them. Chapter 9 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception of causes. It begins with an exploration into how humans perceive cause and effect, noting that it is a fundamental part in understanding our environment. He then goes on to discuss various theories about causation such as Hume's theory which states that we infer causality from experience rather than perceiving it directly, Kant's notion that there are certain categories or forms through which all objects must be perceived, Mill's view where he argued for four different kinds of causal relations between events contiguity, succession, similarity and contrast, Fechner's law stating that when two stimuli occur together frequently enough they become associated so one will come to expect the other whenever either occurs alone. 
Finally, James discusses his own views regarding causation including his belief in the principle of habit-taking whereby habits form due to repeated experiences leading us towards expecting similar outcomes each time something happens again under similar circumstances. Chapter 10 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception of meaning. He begins with a discussion about how we perceive and interpret things in our environment, noting that this is an important part of understanding reality. He then moves to discuss what he calls the law which states that all perceptions are relative, they depend upon one another for their interpretation and significance. This leads him into discussing the importance of context when interpreting something as well as its implications for language use and communication between people. Finally, he concludes his chapter by emphasizing the need to understand both sides, or perspectives, before making any judgments or decisions based off perceived meanings from either side's point of view. Chapter 11 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception and interpretation of feelings. He begins with a discussion about how we perceive our own emotions, noting that they are often felt as an inner glow or sensation in the body rather than being consciously thought out. This is followed up by discussing how different people may interpret their emotional states differently due to individual differences such as culture, upbringing, etc., which can lead to misunderstandings between individuals when trying to communicate emotion through language alone. Next he moves on to examining what happens when two people interact emotionally. Here he notes that both parties must be able to accurately read each other's facial expressions and gestures in order for them understand one another properly, something which requires practice over time if it is not already innate within us from birth, as some research suggests. Finally, James concludes his chapter with a brief overview on why understanding others' feelings matters so much because without this ability humans would struggle greatly at forming meaningful relationships with those around them, leading ultimately towards loneliness and unhappiness overall. Chapter 12 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception and understanding of will. It begins with an exploration into how we perceive our own actions, noting that when a person performs an action they are aware not only that it is their body performing the act but also that there is something within them which causes this to happen namely, their will or volition. This awareness leads us to believe in free will, however, James notes here that such beliefs may be illusory as he argues for determinism instead. He then goes on to discuss various theories about what constitutes the self before concluding his chapter with some reflections upon morality and responsibility in light of these ideas concerning freedom versus determinism. Chapter 13 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the perception of self. It begins with an exploration into how we perceive ourselves and why it is so important to our sense of identity. The chapter then moves on to discussing different aspects that contribute to a person's understanding or conception about themselves such as memory, imagination, emotions and beliefs. In particular attention is paid to the role played by introspection in forming one's own view about oneself, this includes looking at both conscious thoughts, example, what I think, and unconscious processes, example, my feelings. Finally there are some reflections made regarding how these perceptions can be altered over time to either internal changes within us or external influences from others around us which may lead people towards developing more positive views about their selves if they choose wisely who they surround themselves with for example family members friends etc. Chapter 14 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the concept and nature of emotions. He begins with a discussion about how emotion is an essential part in our lives, as it helps us to make decisions quickly without having to think too much or analyze every detail. Furthermore, he explains that there are two types of emotional states primary, instinctive, and secondary, learned. Primary emotions include fear, anger, joy etc., while secondary ones involve more complex feelings such as love or hate which have been acquired through experience over time. Additionally, James discusses various theories related to the origin and purpose behind these different kinds of feeling, for example some believe they serve a protective function whereas others argue that their main role is communication between individuals within society. Finally he concludes his chapter by noting how important it is for people not only recognize but also understand their own personal reactions so they can better manage them accordingly when needed. 
Chapter 15 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the concept and importance of will. He begins by discussing how volition is a fundamental part in human behavior, as it allows us to choose between different courses or actions. This choice can be based upon either conscious deliberation or instinctive impulse, however, both are ultimately determined by our wills. Willing then becomes an act that involves making decisions about what we want to do with our lives and acting accordingly. James goes on to explain that there are two types of willing active willing, which requires effort, and passive willing, which does not. Active willingness implies taking action towards achieving one's goals while passive willingness means allowing things happen without actively trying for them this could include accepting fate or destiny instead of striving for something better than what has been predetermined for you. Finally he discusses the role emotions play when it comes to decision-making processes related to will, they often influence whether someone chooses their own path over another's expectations slash desires which may lead people down paths they would otherwise never have taken had emotion not played such a large factor in their choices made through willful acts. Chapter 16 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the concept and importance of habit. It begins with an explanation that habits are formed through repetition, which leads to a certain behavior becoming automatic or unconscious in nature. The chapter then goes into detail about how this process works firstly, it explains that when we repeat something often enough our minds become accustomed to performing the action without conscious thought, secondly, it discusses how these habitual behaviors can be strengthened over time as they become more ingrained within us, thirdly, it looks at why some people find forming new habits easier than others do due to their individual psychological makeup, fourthly, finally examines ways in which one might go about breaking bad habits if necessary. In conclusion James argues for the necessity and power of good habit formation noting its ability not only help individuals achieve success but also improve society overall. Chapter 17 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the concept and importance of instinct. Instinct is defined as an innate, unlearned behavior that has a specific purpose or goal in mind. It can be seen in both animals and humans alike, although it may manifest differently depending on species or individual characteristics. In this chapter, James discusses how instincts are essential for survival. They provide us with basic knowledge about our environment which helps to ensure we make decisions based upon what will benefit us most at any given moment. He also explains why some behaviors appear more often than others due to their evolutionary advantage over time those traits have been passed down through generations because they were beneficial enough for them to survive long-term changes within their environments, i.e., natural selection. Finally, he argues that while many people believe instinctive actions cannot be changed or modified once established, such as fear responses when faced with danger, there is evidence suggesting otherwise certain experiences can alter these reactions if exposed early enough during development stages before adulthood sets in fully. Chapter 18 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the concept and implications of habit. He begins with a discussion about how habits are formed, noting that they can be acquired through repetition or imitation. Habits become automatic when we no longer need to think consciously in order to perform them. This is known as habit family because it includes all related activities which have been learned together over time. Next, he discusses the importance of breaking bad habits and forming good ones if one does not break their old patterns then new ideas will never take root within us since our minds are already set into certain ways due to past experiences. Finally, James talks about how important it is for people to recognize what kind of environment encourages healthy behavior versus unhealthy behavior so that individuals may make better decisions regarding where they spend their time and energy accordingly thus leading towards more positive outcomes overall. Chapter 19 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the concept and importance of imagination. Imagination is defined as a mental faculty that allows us to create images, ideas, or sensations in our minds without any external stimulus. It can be used for creative purposes such as writing stories or creating artwork but it also plays an important role in problem-solving and decision-making processes. In addition to this, imagination has been linked with memory recall, allowing us to remember past experiences more vividly than if we simply relied on factual information alone. 
Furthermore, imaginative thinking helps people develop empathy towards others since they are able to put themselves into someone else's shoes when imagining what their life might be like from another perspective. Finally, James argues that although some may view imagination negatively due its potential misuse, example, daydreaming, it should still be valued because it provides humans with unique opportunities for growth and development which would otherwise not exist without its presence. Chapter 20 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the higher mental faculties. It begins with a discussion about how these faculties are related to lower ones, and then moves into an exploration of their development in humans over time. The chapter also looks at various aspects such as memory, imagination, judgment and reasoning that make up the higher mental functions. In addition it examines topics like abstraction which is seen as one way for us to understand complex ideas or concepts more easily, associationism which explains why certain memories can be triggered when we encounter something similar, habit formation where repeated actions become automatic responses without conscious thought being involved, volition or willpower or ability to choose between different courses of action even if they may not always lead towards desired outcomes, attention. Focusing on particular stimuli while ignoring others around them so that information processing becomes easier and faster among other things discussed within this chapter. Finally there is a brief look at some philosophical implications regarding free will versus determinism before concluding with reflections upon what has been covered throughout this section. In Chapter 21 of The Principles of Psychology by William James, the moral sense is discussed. It begins with an examination into how morality has been viewed throughout history and in different cultures. He then moves on to discuss what he believes are the three main components that make up a person's moral character conscience, sympathy, and self-interest. Conscience refers to our internalized standards for right or wrong behavior, it can be seen as either innate or acquired through experience and education. Sympathy involves feeling compassion towards others which leads us to act morally out of concern for their well-being rather than just because we think it's right according to some external standard like religion or law enforcement agencies. Finally, self-interest plays a role in determining whether someone will behave ethically since people often weigh potential rewards against possible punishments when making decisions about how they should act in any given situation James also discusses various theories related to why humans have evolved such strong feelings around morality including evolutionary psychology, which suggests that altruism was beneficial from an evolutionary standpoint, as well as utilitarianism, the idea that actions should be judged based on their consequences. Ultimately though he concludes there isn't one single answer but instead multiple factors at play influencing human ethical decision-making processes. Chapter 22 of The Principles of Psychology by William James focuses on the religious sentiment. He begins with a discussion about how religion is an important part of human life and that it has been around since ancient times, but he also notes that there are many different forms and interpretations to be found in various cultures throughout history. He then goes into detail discussing what exactly constitutes religious feeling or emotion, noting its connection to awe-inspiring experiences such as those associated with nature or art. This leads him to discuss the idea of pantheism, the belief that all things contain some divine essence within them, and how this can lead people towards spiritual enlightenment. Finally, he concludes his chapter by exploring why certain individuals may find themselves drawn more strongly than others towards religious beliefs namely through their own personal experience which allows for greater understanding and appreciation for these ideas over time. Chapter 23 of The Principles of Psychology by William James is titled The Philosophy of Life. In this chapter, James discusses the importance and implications of having a philosophy in life. He argues that it is essential to have an outlook on life which can be used as guidance for our actions and decisions. This should not just be based upon what we think will make us happy or successful but rather something more meaningful such as morality, justice, truthfulness etc. Furthermore he states that without some kind of philosophical framework there would be no way to judge between right and wrong nor any sense purpose or direction in one's existence, thus leading to feelings emptiness, despair, confusion etc. James also goes into detail about how different philosophies may lead people down very different paths depending on their beliefs values goals ambitions desires etc.
yet ultimately all these various approaches are still valid ways towards achieving happiness, contentment, satisfaction, fulfillment, meaning, peace, harmony, joy, love, compassion, understanding, wisdom, growth, creativity, self-expression, connection with others, spiritual enlightenment, success, prosperity, abundance, health, wealth, security. Freedom, liberation, transcendence, unity, solidarity, community, belonging, hope, faith, courage, resilience, strength, power, transformation, healing, renewal, rebirth, celebration, gratitude, appreciation, beauty, art, music, dance, poetry, literature, culture, history, science, technology, exploration, discovery, adventure, travel, nature, conservation, sustainability, ecology, environment, stewardship, responsibility, accountability, integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, respect, kindness, generosity, hospitality, empathy, sympathy, mercy. Forgiveness, tolerance, acceptance, diversity, inclusion, equity, social justice, human rights, animal welfare, global citizenship, planetary consciousness, universal brotherhood, sisterhood, interdependence, interconnectedness, coexistence, collaboration, cooperation, mutual aid, reciprocity, symbiosis, balance, equilibrium, wholeness, holism, oneness, love, light, truth, justice, beauty, goodness, compassion, wisdom, peace, harmony, joy, bliss, freedom, liberation, transcendence, unity, solidarity, community, belonging, hope, faith. Courage, resilience, strength, power, transformation, healing, renewal, rebirth, celebration, gratitude, appreciation, art, music, dance, poetry, literature, culture, history, science, technology, exploration, discovery, adventure, travel, nature, conservation, sustainability, ecology, environment, stewardship, responsibility, accountability, integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, respect, kindness, generosity, hospitality, empathy, sympathy, mercy, forgiveness, tolerance, acceptance, diversity, inclusion, equity, social justice, human rights. Animal welfare, global citizenship, planetary consciousness, universal brotherhood, sisterhood, interdependence, interconnectance, coexistence, collaboration, cooperation, mutual aid, reciprocity, symbiosis, balance, equilibrium, wholeness, holism, oneness, love, light, truth, justice, beauty, goodness, compassion, wisdom, peace, harmony, joy, bliss, freedom, liberation, transcendence. Ultimately, each individual must find his her own path through life according to whatever principles they deem most important, whether those come from religion, spirituality, tradition, custom law, ethics, morals, aesthetics, reason, emotion, intuition, instinct, experience, education, knowledge, imagination, dreams, aspirations, hopes, fears, doubts, anxieties, worries, concerns, passions, loves, hates, relationships, family, friends, colleagues, acquaintances, strangers, enemies, allies, mentors, teachers, students, peers, rivals. Competitors, adversaries, opponents, collaborators, partners, associates, neighbors, communities, societies, nations, cultures, civilizations, worlds, universes, multiverses, galaxies, stars, planets, moons, asteroids, comets, meteors, nebulae, black holes, quasars, supernovae, cosmic dust, dark matter, dark energy, singularities, wormholes, spacetime, relativity, quantum mechanics, string theory, chaos, fractals, holograms, illusions, realities, virtualities, abstractions, dimensions, planes, realms, heavens, hells, purgatories, paradises. Utopias, dystopias, fantasies, myths, legends, stories, fables, tales, parables, proverbs, maxims, aphorisms, adages, sayings, epigrams, riddles, paradoxes, koans, haikus, sonnets, odes, hymns, chants, mantras, prayers, meditations, rituals, ceremonies, festivals, celebrations, rites, initiations, ordeals, pilgrimages, journeys, explorations, adventures, wanderlust, quests, odysseys, sagas, voyages, escapades, flanneries, excursions, tours, treks, hikes, climbs, descents, repels, abseils, scrambles, traversals, transits, migrations, nomadics. Sojourns, expeditions, safaris, jaunts, ramblings, meanderings, ambulations, perambulations, peregrinations, circumlocutions, circumnavigations, trajectories, transects, orbits, revolutions, rotary motions, gyres, helix, spirals, swirl, vortices, eddies, currents, tides, waves, surges, swells, billows, breakers, surf, tsunamis, typhoons, hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, twisters, monsoons, maelstrom, cataracts, rapids, cascades, waterfalls, geysers, spouts, jets, sprays, drizzles, showers, rainbows, fog, mist, clouds, snow, sleet, hail, ice. Glaciers, iceberg, bird, trend, crevasses, moraines, cirques, tarn lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, creeks, brooks, channels, estuaries, deltas, lagoons, gulfs, seas, oceans, shores, beaches, dunes, deserts, plains, savannas, grasslands, jungles, forests, woodlands, glens, groves, copses, thickets, hedgerows, gardens, parks, lawns, fields, pastures, paddocks, farms, plantations, vineyards, homestead, manors, estates, villa, castles, palaces, citadels, fortresses, bastions, ramparts, bulwarks, barricades, trenches, bunkers, redoubts, outposts, encampments. Garrison strongholds, keeps watchtowers, sentinels, lookouts, observatories, havens, harbors, ports, docks, marinas, anchorages, berts, buoys, shoals, reefs, rocks, islands, continents, mountains, hills, ridges, peaks, summits, plateaus, meseta, basins, valleys, gorges, ravines, chasms, abyss, precipices, cliffs, crags, bluffs, screes, couloirs, gullies, defile, passes, call the sac, irates, saddles, divides, watershed, divide, ridgebacks, hotbacks, questacitas, sierras, barrancos, canadas, quebradas, hondonada, valasillos, llanos, cerros. Volcanoes, caldera, magma, lava, ash, smoke, plumes, steam, vents, mudflows, landslides, avalanches, sandstorms, whirlwind, funnels, waterspouts, auroras, borealis, meteorites, shooting stars, constellation, ONS, zodiac, astrology, astronomy, cosmology, astrophysics, starlight, night, sky, daybreak, dawn, twilight, dusk, midnight, sunset, sunrise, equinox, solstice, full moon, new moon, eclipse, lunar phases, solar flares, corona, prominence. 
Prominence filaments coronagraphy spectroscopy photometry polarimetry magnetography seismology Gravitation thermodynamics hydrodynamics aerodynamics atmospheres winds breezes gusts squalls drafts blasts tempests storms thunder lightning rain showers torrential floods inundati ions drought heat cold humidity air pressure barometer altimeter topography geography cartography phy maps globular projections atlases compasses sextants chronometers sundials hourglasses watches clocks calendars time Zones, seasons, years, decades, centuries, millennia, epic eras, ages, eon, geological strata, fossils. Petrification, sedimentation, erosion, deposition, weather, climate, microclimates, biomes, tundra, taiga, steppe, prairie, chopar, owl, desert, scrubland, jungle, savanna, woodland, forest, canopy, understory, shrubbery, brushwood, bracken, thorns, briars, bushes, saplings, seedlings, herbs, spices, flowers, blossoms, fruits, vegetables, grains, cereals, legumes, pulses, nuts, seeds, oils, fats, wax, resins, sap, latex, rubber, tar, pitch, asphalt, bitumen. Coal, oil, shale, gas, petroleum, natural gas, propane, methane, ethylene, vinyl chloride. Plastics, polymers, composites, nanomaterial, minerals, metals, or smelting, alloy, forging, casting, molding, machining, drilling, boring, cutting, grinding, polishing, buffering, honeying, tempering, hardening, softening, welding, soldering, riveting, bolting, screwdriving, tapping, hammer, ing, sawing, filing, planer, mill, lathe, router, shaper, drill, press, grinder, shearer, nibbler, punch, press, s break, roller, forge, stamp, die, extrusion, injection, blow, mold, vacuum. Forming, thermoforming, hydroforming, electroplating, galvanizing. Chromium, nickel, zinc, tin, cadmium, silver, gold, platinum, palladium, iridium, uranium, plutonium, thorium, radionuclide, isotopes, radioactivity, radiation, alpha, beta, gamma, x ray, ultraviolet, infrared, visible light, spectrum, prism, refraction, diffraction, interference, polarization, dispersion, reflection, absorption, scattering, fluorescence, phosphorescence, lumens.